Oh, what's up guys today i'm showing you guys how to use binance and how many things you can do binance to do how to future trade on binance how to p2p trading on binance how to make market orders on binance how to use the crypto loans on binance the launch card and every other thing that binance has to offer i'll be showing you guys today how to use it and how to get your trades on and how to start making the best trades in the crypto space right now Let's get into my desktop and so now guys we're in my desktop page and as you can see we're on binance before we get into it i hope that everyone watching this video has a binance account or has a registered binance account so getting into it as you can see i'm on my desktop page and you see everything is showing up so getting into how to use binance app first of all you guys have to know how to buy crypto so there are basically three ways to buy crypto. One with your card, two with P2P trading platform, uh -huh. and three by depositing through your bank. But we'll do the depositing through your bank later. So going first of all on how to buy crypto with your card. So basically you go to the buy crypto, put credit card or debit card. If you're on your phone, it will be at the desktop page for you and you start down you can change whatever currency you want but since i'm in nigeria i would like to use the nigerian naira and i can set maybe let's say two million naira and okay as i can see i can do above i think 1.8 million okay so let me just set it at 1.8 million right okay i'm sorry 1.7 million and let's get it okay and as you can see that gives me 0 0.06 BTC and basically I can click buy BTC but as it is I cannot get transactions through here I'll just click buy so you guys can see what it will show me the process a little bit of process to it and how to confirm payments so as you can see it says I should I will confirm it asked me for my CVV which is a code behind the back of my card and after I verify and proceed that it completes payment if I have the amount in my card. So basically guys, that is how you can buy crypto with your card. You can buy different coins. It isn't just BAC, Bitcoin. You can buy Bitcoin, USD, Ethereum, XRP, ADA, Ink, and the rest of the other coins in here. Both USDT too. So going on how to buy with P2P. Let's just get to the tab. First of all, you can buy two P2P by selecting one. You can select the currency you want to buy in. I'll use NGN since it's my country's currency. And I will go to all payments. You can select whatever payments method you want. If you want to just select all, just not to be picky. Or you can check if the payment method you want. I if I want to pay with PayPal, I can use PayPal. There's PayPal, it should be out. Okay, so it seems they've removed PayPal. So if I want to collect it by let's say Pioneer, I can press Pioneer in here. If it is, it will show up. But let me just check it out. Seems some call some payment methods are not showing. So as I said, I think you should be able to use PayPal unless it has been removed. But Going into not the version from where we what we're saying, you could go here, click buy. Well, let me just refresh this. Uh, refresh five seconds to refresh the page. So basically, going into buy with P2P, you can select which buy you want to buy from. As you can see, there are different buyers with different price ranges. So at this point. This person is selling at 490 per dollar, while this one is selling at 490.20 Kobo per dollar. And it depends on who I want to use. Okay, let me set it to 10 seconds, but it keeps refreshing every 10 seconds. So, as you can see, the, each person has a different completion rate. So, completion rate actually means how many transactions you got and you were able to complete or pay the person. And get your crypto apps basically completion rate so i do not go for people with less than 
an 85% completion rate because anybody who has below that, I believe, I know finish my transaction or is a scammer or trying to scam people up to money. And also, if I want to trade and I um, I see a price that I like and the person has this sticker, that means this person has been verified by Binance. And having the sticker means that this person can't steal your money, no matter what. Because already the person who have about 2,500 US dollars stored with Binance in case if any issues come up and it becomes that the person steals your money or whatever or finds a way to make you complete the transaction while you feel that you're fading or whatever or he is fading the money to you if you're the one buying from him or he's the one buying from you that is why i normally find these people but if i don't see people with this ticket at a price range i want to buy i could always use these people because it's not like they're scammers because they don't have a ticket there are normal people like you trying to do transactions but i tell you i don't do less than 85 percent when it comes buying on P2P. So as you can see, you can buy different, you can buy BTC, BUSD, BNB, ETH, DAI, and NGN using this method, P2P. Then, as I said, we will get into using your bank account, but I'll open that later on. So let's get into the 10th method when you deposit money into your bank account, okay? Let me just see if I'll do that. Let me do that right now. Uh, you guys will see my crypto balance, but I do not care because this is my other account. Let me just use this and show you guys how to buy crypto. As you can see, I own a lot of BNB. So let's say I want to buy ETH, some ETH right now. So I click buy ETH. It would either take me here to buy Ethereum or it takes me to cash balance. I can press cash balance and top up and let's see. It brings me here. This is how you guys could buy crypto with your car, but I'm just trying to show you guys how to top up. As you can see, Nigerian Naira has been canceled or is suspended for the moment. In order to put cash because of the CBM restrictions, if you want to use USD for those watching from the United States or wherever, you can select your currency. It shows you different payments that you can see. We have the Silvergate Swift or Silvergate Send. I can impute the amount of money I want to put in and continue. And I go ahead and put every other details and pay in the money to the account that will be given to you by them. And boom, you have your crypto. So, as I said, going into the market pass when you have the crypto with you or you have the money with you, going into the market pass, here you can select the crypto you want to. So, as you mean, I want to buy BTC and I put in some USD, not USDT, but USD, and I can simply select US, BTC, USD, or if I don't see that, I can press USD to find the coins that have to do with USD. But as you can see, USD already gets converted to USDT because USDT is already pegged to the dollar. So if you put in US dollars, it already gets changed to USDT. And here, basically, let's just cut this out. Here, basically, if I want to trade on BTC, I go to, let's use BTC as an example. I want to trade BTC. I go to Bitcoin, open the tab, open. If I'm a, I, I believe I'm a little bit first in what I'm saying. So I'm going to take the tone down a little bit. So there are three methods of buying or buying a particular coin when you have USDT on your platform, which USDT is what you call a stable coin. I believe you guys know what a stable coin is by now if you're getting into the market. So first of all, what I do is I go to spot. I use the spot market. So there, you can also use the cross tree X or isolated 10X. But well, basically, I would advise anybody using this to use the Spart. That is the best. So, using the Spart, I could come here and select. This is the a limit transaction. So that limit transaction allows you to set the amount you want. 
to put in and where you want to buy at and you could also change here because there's stop limit and others or well, limit transactions allows you to set the amount you want to buy in at so i say let me buy maybe i want to buy fifty thousand dollars for a btc and i say buy at maybe same as btc drop now say buy at 58 100 maybe 58 100 so if i put a buy here if I put a buy here, let me just set this back. If I put a buy here, it will basically set my buy in position at 5800. If it ever goes, if it goes below 5800, it will still buy in. But if it never goes below it, your order will not get filled. Because what is called is an order. You're placing an order right now using the BTC market. So if you place an order, if I should place an order here, let me just oh wait, sorry, I'm pulling this price down. So sorry, if you place an order down here, your order will actually pop up here. The orders tab. Well let me see why that other tab is showing. Settings. Okay, everything is on. So basically it should pop up immediately under here if you set a order. Okay, let's say I set oh let's just say I set a 10 BT 10 USDT order for BTC here at 8100 and I say buy BTC. Okay, it's not up to let me just set it at 11. I say buy BTC. As you can see, my order has been set. Let's just see if it shows up. Okay, so since the, my order tab isn't showing, so let me just get it fixed. Okay, still having some issues. Let me just get that done. Second, uh huh. Okay, I think we're having a little bit of issue getting this order done. Let me see if I can get it. Okay, yep. Let me turn off the order. Okay, uh huh. Okay, I've seen where our mistake is at. Let me just get this. Open orders is what I have to set on. Okay, huh? So as you can see, the order is open here for 5800 price target 5800 and the amount of crypto it's gonna buy from me and the total I'm getting. So I could I could cancel it right now because I don't need any BTC Bitcoin right now. I call it BTC because that is the ticker for Bitcoin. Also, you can do a stop limit. So stop limit is basically maybe if you have Bitcoin or something, and maybe Bitcoin right now is dropping massively, and you want, and you want to sell your Bitcoin at the certain price. You could also, or you want to buy Bitcoin at the certain price. The same thing with this, but basically stop limit. Basically, you should use it mainly if you want to sell Bitcoin at a certain price. So if I want to big sell, I still put the stop limit. And maybe I sell. I want to sell my Bitcoin at seven five hundred. If it goes below fifty eight, I can sell seven five hundred. Sell my BTC. I set the amount of BTC I have, and boom, it sells at that price. So that's basically what stop limit is. It's just like stop loss when you're using forex market. Stop my loss at this point, so that it doesn't your price or amount doesn't go below this point. If you have one BTC, it doesn't go below. 75 so if you see drop below 75 or goes to 50,000 you already what jumped off at 75 so if this stop limit doesn't actually mean that the transaction will go in instantly it just means that even if bitcoin is at 59,000 right now instead of 75 stop limit and if it ever goes down to 75 it will sell my bitcoin there's also market order when it comes to buy and sell so everything i'm talking right now has to do with buy and sell what that doing is limited order is for buying and selling the same thing. So using market order, I'm putting a market order in that says that use whatever price the market is at right now. That's what a market order is. Use whatever price the market is at right now to buy in or sell for me my Bitcoin. That is basically what market order is. So you set the amount of total US you have, and I press buy and to buy at the market order, BTC at market order. But since I don't want to do that, I won't complete the transactions by putting by BTC. So 
that is basically it for using the market buy but before we get out of the market and go into futures trading we have to talk about some things so when you see a 10x behind a coin that means you can't use anything below ten dollars that is why when i tried a nine dollar transaction it didn't go through you can't use anything below ten ten dollars to do this transaction when you see also a co5x you can't use anything below five dollars to complete that transaction that is just what it means it's not in much into it, it doesn't mean the coin has moved a thousand percent or whatever that is just what it means you can't use below five dollars to buy or buy in or sell out same thing you can use below ten dollars to buy in or sell out when you see a ten x behind a coin. So going into another way, let me just find a tab that I want to show you guys. Also, there is also the Binance Convert tab. Before we get into the futures, there's also the Binance Convert tab, which allows you to convert your crypto faster than anything. Convert it with the market order. Don't really have to stress yourself yes. <clears throat> and using the convert tab i can just select my bmb as you see i selected i select usdt to change it no press maybe use max of my bmb it shows if i press preview it previews and shows me the conversion rate and then i press confirm and it confirms my conversion i don't want to do it because i don't want to convert my bmb to sdt so that is how you use better to so get into binance futures so this is a futures tab well usdt m futures tab here you you, you transfer the usdt to your binance wallet so i me just open up the wallet right here and show you how to do the transfer of your usdt into your your, your futures account so basically as you can see I have this amount so I press transfer just transfer and I click instead of first match I go to USDT and futures or futures or I can transfer it to my P2P wallet if I want to sell but I say USDT and I go to USDT tether shows me how much max amount I have I can select I can put in any amount one dollar to whatever I can place huge max amount confirm and once I confirm it goes into my futures account. So that said you can select the price in which you want to enter a trade in. So this is the futures account. You can select whatever price you want to enter a trade into. Like as you can see the price target here is at fifty eight eighty one. I can simply select okay I want to get in with whatever amount of USDT I have it will show me the amount of BTC I can buy in at, at or sell at so here it shows me 0 0.008 BTC if I want to buy in with 0 0.75 USDT I have here but that is not what I want to do so I could also set a take profit as well so take profit is basically what point you want at what point your game will reach and you want to take out your gains also stop loss at what point you want your, your losses to stop so most of the time i don't set a stop loss at first i'll take profits until i've inserted the trade so that once the trade starts going high and i start having a higher amount i can simply set my stop loss at a break in with my entry price and now put my take profit higher than the price that i entered so basically what your take profit has to be higher than the price you're entering at if you're making a buy that is if you're buying long so buying long actually means you feel that the price is going to appreciate higher than what it is at right now and selling short means that you feel that the price is going to drop more below the price you're buying in at, at that point so that is basically what this is all about and <clears throat> you set your stop loss and you take profit so the same thing goes for the market order and stop limits as we use back when we were talking about using the normal markets to buy crypto that you you're want to store or whatever. So getting off this, as you guys can see, let me show you how an order is because I have an order set. As you can see, 
I have an order set here right now, and I'm about six cents down, about two cents down right now. As you can see, my margin ratio is ten. I entered a liquidation price at six eight zero eight. The liquidation price means the price in which you reach and your whole users account gets liquidated. This is my entry price at eight nine zero three. Mark price at eight eight zero eight for the which is the market price right now. So I can easily add more margin to this in order to reduce my liquidation price. Also set a market order. So I check the market or whatever or close my positions. But that is not something I want to do. So you can go to open orders and you can see how much I put in. So that is it for basically for making futures. Buying into futures, all you have to know is if you feel the price going to go by your your technical analysis and everything, you can set your price entry target and how much you want to enter with. Put your stop loss or and you take profit and press buy long or sell short. You shall return buy long if you feel the price gonna appreciate more and you buy enough to make more gain with your money and sell short. Also, I have to tell you there's something called the leverage. The leverage is Basically, how much you're willing, willing to risk, or how much you're willing to gain, how much you're willing to risk for a, 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 a trade. So it's just like how much lot size you're using when you're doing futures trading. So basically, I could go from a 1x to a 25x. So basically, what it means is me setting a 25x leverage means that if BTC should move and I put a buy long and BTC goes up maybe 10%. That means this is 5x leverage and entering that at, that, at one price, another price that I entered and goes to the top percent above that price and I put the buy long. That means it will be that 10% times 25, which is 25 times that of that 10%, which is 450%, which means that I will make 250% of whatever amount that I used to enter that trade. If I put it at 125x, maybe I enter with $100. And basically, it goes up 10%. And I make 1,250% of my $100, which means I've just made 12.5x plus 12.5x is 1,250 gains, which means I'll do 12.5 times $100, which will give me $1,250 as my gain total. And that is what leverage is. It's actually how much you're about to risk or how much you're able to do. So the higher your leverage price, your leverage, the, the higher your liquidation price is and the closer your liquidation price is to the your entry price. If I had if I had entered this trade with about maybe let's say or uh, let's say 25 8, 8, 50 XTP. I might have my liquidation price around 7,000, maybe 500. Maybe if I enter with 125x, my liquidation price will be around 86, 85, 84. It means just means you're risking more to enter a trade. Which maybe if you're the trade, is going to pump massively up higher and higher. But I wouldn't advise anybody to use it. Or one, put five x or anything. No. Anything higher than. 25x for newers, I'll say use around the 10x and up. But if you just want to start in, 25x is also good. But anything above that is too high because of the volatility in the market. So, entering to another thing you have to know about finance is the launch part. Finance current and futures is just the same thing as this. I wanted to say that before I forgot, I wanted to enter finance, but current M is the same thing as USDM. Does that when you're trading, you're normal trading with USDT as, as your leverage into the market, you have to trade with the coin. So, here, if I wanted to do coin and coin futures, I'll have to transfer ETH in order to trade with ETH. I don't, I, it's no more BTT USD, it's just ETH virtual. So, which means I'm using the ETH to trade ETH. So, if the price goes higher, the more ETH I made that one. 
doesn't have to sell it because US is a stable coin. So even if the price of the coin appreciates, you're not your your gains are not appreciated. But if I use coin M futures, as you can see here, let's just open. If I use coin M futures, which it goes against, it goes with USD. So if I use maybe let's say ten Bitcoin to enter this. And should be twenty dollars worth of Bitcoin to enter. I think yeah, twenty dollars worth of Bitcoin, or let's say just are using fifty thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. Enter this trade. If it keeps going up on the up and up, that means I would keep waiting. It is in the wrong chart right now. Let me just find what it is. Um, this is a quarterly chart, so it shows what people feel is going to be the quarterly. Let's go. So this is place you actually want to be. Yes. So if I set, let's say I want to use five thousand USD for this, so it shows me that I'm able to use four point two five one two BTC as my as my lot size for the entry, and I set a twenty x temperature and set my maybe half to fifty thousand as you can see, and I put my take profit and stop loss. So what it just means is that if this goes up, I'm making gains in Bitcoin, not in USDT no more, or US dollars, which is USDT. I'm making profits in Bitcoin. So if I should close this transaction, maybe I'm 50% up and I'm closing this transaction at in BTC. I may have 0.5 BTC as gains. If BTC price goes up, my gains still goes up. Because I made the gains in Bitcoin, not in USDT, which is a single coin. And so that's just it. We're going into the Binance launch pad. Binance launch pad is a place where Binance actually gives you the chance to get into some IDOs, what is called initial text offering or initial thought offerings. So these are all initial coin offerings at ICOs. So this is a place you could get into a coin that yet to be listed or a coin that just opened recently and is getting listed on an exchange or is even yet to be listed on any exchange and maybe they decide to get that listed on Binance first and Binance will list the coin here or Launchpad is also a place where you can get coins that are about to list on Binance. When a coin that is about to list on Binance always gets in here first for people to buy in if you want to buy in. So as you can see, this one is firstly getting listed on Binance. So that is why it is here right now at the launch part. So the ones that get that are about to get listed, but already listed on another exchange, but about to get listed on Binance for the first time. You see, I am the launch group. Here you can stake your other cryptos. Like here, I can say if I want to get Alice token, I can stake my Chrome here, BUSD or BNB to end. All these tokens, but I'm not touching that. So, as you can see, this coin, if I wanted to get into this coin, so we do it in the initial text offering or initial coin offering. And maybe this is the public sale, they are doing their public sale on and private sale on Binance. Binance tells me to commit an amount of BNB in here in order to be able to get a coin with this. So as you can see, we have the sale price at 0.1 USD. So, Binance will actually take the amount I've committed to use for the buying of the crypto. So, if you want to get into some new coins and you get again listed on Binance, come to the launch pad and then get them before they get listed and make gains from them. So, also going into the crypto rewards, this is a place where you can stake. It's just like a staking platform in Binance. Or you can stake your coins to earn more of those coins. So as you can see, these coins have an estimated ROI per year or APY per year. If I should stake my BM, my USDT, uh, for seven days, lock, getting it locked up for seven days, it will give me a 6.3% ROI per year. There are coins with higher ROIs. As you can see, BMB here has 14.7%. 9% if I see for 90 days, 
19.79%. If the same thing for rows, I get 75.59%. So it just depends on the coin you want to stay with and at what platform. So as you can see, there are high risk products. Here is a higher risk stake and put. Well, basically, I would go to either flexible or fixed terms where there are no high risk of losing your money if things go sideways. So that's basically it for here. This is just a place to stake your coins or earn more of your coins by staking or locking them up. Binance. So enter the Binance Mining Pool. Binance Mining Pool is a place where you could get the Binance hash rate and you can become a Binance miner if you have the mining tool to mine coins. That is just basically what this is all about. Showing you your earnings when you mine to show your earnings for the hash rate of the mining you're doing for the day. So, as you can see, I'm not a miner, so there's no, I'm not earning, not in for mining. As you can see, this are uh, what you put in if you want to become a miner. Everything is already set up for you when you enter your Binance account and register. If you want to become a Binance miner, you just put in those codes in your miner and start mining. And it will get registered here and show you how much you earn for the day, how much coins you're making, your hash rate, and everything. So getting into the crypto loans platform here, here it allows Binance allows you to get a loan on your own crypto. So maybe I want to get, uh, let's say, a two thousand dollar loan for me from Binance. I have to have at least nine BMB set aside. My Binance account in order to get this loan. So if I say I'm getting a thousand dollars, it says I have to have 4.92, which I have enough as you can see. And if I want to get a loan that I will just press, maybe I want to set the loan for 180 days and I'll pay it back. So it charges me 180, it charges me an extra 297 USD or dollars for leaving it for, for them to give me this money to trade or whatever for the next 180 days and I have to pay it back. So basically when you do a crypto loan, the, you, the loan amount that you're loaning, the loan amount that you get is not being taken up from you. You just get that. Your BNB, my BNB if I should take this loan, will still be showing up in my account. But the only reason is that right now, the only thing on it is that I can't sell my BNB and I can't withdraw my BNB from my account until I pay back that loan. That's just it. So if your BNB appreciates the price and keeps appreciating the price, maybe I set my 4.92 BNB here for this, and I take the $1,000 I'm not able to pay back to $1,000. Maybe something happens, I get robbed or something, and I want to pay back. And maybe BNB appreciates to $2,500 per one. And my 4 BNB turns into 4.9 BNB turns into $10,000 or $20,000. I will just press, I'll just go into the tab after borrowing and press take back money. So it will just come out maybe 0.1 BNB. Then when my money is at $20,000, it's $1,000. Just take out $1,200 off of my $20,000 and I'll still have my remaining BNB there. So it doesn't just take your 4.92 BNB because you didn't pay. It's just locking it into your account because you're now owing them so that you can be able to pay back the loan. That's just it for the crypto loans part of it. If you read this tutorial, it's basically the same thing as I said here, but I'm just trying to give it to you on a lower base. You could, you could do any crypto, you could borrow any crypto, no matter what crypto as you want. You could even borrow euros from them, or whatever. There. So that is done for the crypto loans part. So that is the end crypto part of this, where you can earn extra rewards for adding liquidity into coins that are on Binance. So as you can see, there's a BTC, a new BTC. If I end this, anyone with this extra rewards means that there's an extra reward that has Binance aspect onto these coins. As you can see, every coin has it right now. So if I decide to Peg my BNB to BSD, and maybe I say, okay, max 
the style. So I have to also have 1850. If I'm to put my whole coins here, I have to have 1850. The same thing on here on USD in order to be able to accept this rumors and add liquidity. So the amount of BNB you have is the amount of BGS you have to also have in order to add liquidity and you earn some portions of the fees that Binance gets when you do simple do transactions, you get a little bit of amount of those fees. If you are tired of that, you can also come to this review tab, select the coin you put in and click max and redeem all your coins or whatever particular coin you want to redeem from it from there. So you can also there's also a swap Binance swap where you can swap your coins immediately before you put, add them into the liquidity tab if you are this and here my share will show you your share of the liquidity tab of liquidity pool. this will show your share of the liquidity pool if only you have set in a liquidity before so that is just it for the finance place as you all know you can select an overview and see every single thing you have in your finance account as you can see from here, it shows you every single amount I have on this my on this particular Binance account. I have this total amount that is on my Binance account. So that is basically it for the video, guys. Check me out on the next. We'll also be doing some other tutorial videos, going in depth on some other tutorial videos like futures trading and when. Good times to enter into the market and all the things. So you guys check out our video out and hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button for more of this kind of videos. Hit the like button or the dislike button. Drop of course a comment down below. Tell us what you think. Whether it's good or bad, we would like to know what you think about the video and about and if this video actually helped you out in a way we would like to get that down in the comment down below. Thanks guys. Keep it cool, keep it fresh, stay fresh. What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make 10x gains almost on every new crypto project that I get into and today I'm going to be showing you guys the two ways that I do that but before we get into the video, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification button to get more of this and let's get into the video. So today guys, I'll be showing you the 10 so today guys, I'll be showing you the two ways I said in the beginning of how I make 10x gains so as you can see we are in front of my system you can see everything on my system right now and basically there's two ways I find 10x coins before they get listed on big exchanges and before they get out basically I buy it on public sales and on private sales so this is the two ways that I get into it and the first way is called the Binance launch part Basically, the Binance Launchpad is a way for you to buy into new tokens that are getting launched on the Binance platform. Like this new crypto called Tokyo Crypto. This crypto at first hadn't gotten listed on any other exchange. It did a public sale on Binance. So, if you were able to get into it, as you can see, I got into the coin about put it about 5 BNB got this deducted as you can see I got 34.214 for the price of a dollar for the price of 10 cents and right now this particular token is basically around two three dollars so that's basically a 20x from the price in which I bought in but going through as that opens you can see that so many other projects right here let me just go to view. also you guys can see every other project 
they have gotten listed here and basically none of these projects here have gone lower than a 10x after getting listed on Binance. As we know, Coin, Coin Telegraph listed talked about this coin after it did a massive 20x after getting listed. Same thing with SafePal, a massive 20x plus. We also saw that with the Alice token from the launch pool. Also, the launch pool is part of the launch pad or the launch platform. We also saw that with Alice, Alice did about 60,000%. And you guys can go check this out on your own. Check out the pre sale price and how much it is at right now. This coin is about $16. At a pre sale, this coin was around, I think, 60 cents or 50 cents. Because I also got into this coin and I did a massive 50x from this coin. And basically, guys, that is how I get it. And also, TLM is a new coin that just came out. I'm just giving it as, as a, maybe what would I call it, as a bonus to the video. So you can basically stake your BNB. As you can see, I'm staked 4 BNB plus. With um, you can see all my balances here because we're trying to be transparent on this channel. I can say I have 4.9 BNB staked for this, and I make about this amount, maybe about 10, about 0 0.10 TLM per hour. So this is another coin. It hasn't got unlisted anywhere else. Let me just get it out. So you guys can be seeing all this. And, oh no, no, TLM is what I wanted to get. What I wanted to see is DKO. So the Tokyo crypto I was telling you about, I did about a 30x. Wait, let me just get that here. Okay. So as you can see, that 2.76. So right at 2.76, that's a 27x pump from the 10 cents I bought it from. And basically, that is why I told you if you could get into the coins before it gets listed using the Binance launch card then you can make a beautiful 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 10x gains every time you get into a coin and basically this could work for my people in Nigeria because I'm Nigerian so you guys should go check this out basically this video is for you guys because I know all of you guys back here trying to make the money the fast way get it the easy and crypto is one of the ways you can get there but you also have to get your time and your way in so how do you get into this? Basically, you also have always have to come check the launch pad and launch pool points, and you always have to have BNB because most of the times when these projects get listed, you have to have BNB for your in your wallet for seven days so that each day they take the snapshot of your wallet, then they add all the snapshots that they got. So if you had like five BNB on your wallet and this coin got Tokyo Crypto got listed on that day. I was told you and you are told that it would take seven days before it gets listed on Binance. But you got listed on the launch pad today and it was told you guys seven days and you were told to keep a BNB. You were told to buy BNB and keep. And that BNB will be snapshotted every single day. So if you have five BNB, they will add five BNB into seven places, which is seven days of the snapshot that they got your BNB, which is thirty five. Then divide it by seven again. And that will give them 5 BNB that you'll be able to get staked for Tokyo Crypto. Which is basically what I did. I kept my 5 BNB here. And I got into this coin and basically made a lot of gains from it. About from a $3 pricing they took from me because over, over 10 million BNB was staked by people. So I had only some 5 million coins. So after the calculations and everything. For it to reach everybody's hands, the coins to reach everybody's hands, they had to, they can't use my whole 5 BNB to get me the coin. So I got only, out of my 5 BNB, I got only $3 worth of it. So $3 was deducted from my BNB, $3 worth of BNB was deducted, and I got about this, but still I made about 100x gains. So guys, going into the second week, that I make 10x gains by getting into pre sales and private sales of coins before it's get listed. Is the ICO calendar in coin market cap? So, what does this ICO calendar do? It tells you of every single coin that has not been listed on any platform that is still doing their ICO points and are listed on coin market cap right now, but not on any exchange. Like 
you can see the TLM amount I told you about not yet listed on any exchange yet only on the launch pool on Binance which is there that is where they are doing their private sale and everything so basically that is how you can get a coin on launch pool so this is what they do so this is how I get into coins this is how I know the coins that are going to get listed like let's say I wanted to get into this coin like how I got into this coin right now and I bought some of it before it even gets listed and even X pool how I got into that was I first come in here well my system and open the coins and the coin that I see that has this that has the contract address already kept here what I do is I copy it and I go into pancake swap or uniswap check if the code the, the, it works out there like let's say I go into pancake swap right now I want to buy alien alien world token and I already have some of it already but let's say I want to buy it and I come into pancake swap I go to trade exchange you can also do this on your trust wallet but using what I have here I go to exchange I select currency as you can see I paste the contract address in here I search and I wait for it to show if it doesn't show maybe it's because I'm connected let me log out and let's refresh the page Let's see what happens right now. Okay. I search. It's supposed to pop out, but I don't know why it's taking a little bit of time. Let's see. Let me see if I if it's here. Yeah. Oh. Let's try this of the X pool token. But most of the time, if it's here, it's okay. As you can see, XPO, the X pool token is here because I already added it and bought some. Also with the alien this and I already have some but I don't know why it's not showing up right now when I put it in. But it does show up after after a bit of time. I think it's taking a little bit of time to show up. But that's how I am able to get into the scorings and buy it before they even get listed at all. As you can see here it's showing that it hasn't gotten listed at all. That is this ICO is getting started on the April of thirteenth, April seventh, April thirteenth. Which is uh, is ongoing already. The IC is ongoing on the launch pool, which I already showed you guys before, where you can stake your BNB and get TLM. That is how you get into the launch. That's basically how, that's basically their private or public sale, private sale to people. So that is this has been way the two main ways I get get into coins before they get listed. So you guys should go check out the ICO calendar on. Coin market cap and check out Binance Launchpad and Binance Launch Pool. I'm also going to be dropping down my referral link down below. If you want to register for a new Binance account, you can use the referral link below, and you will all you get ten dollars when you deposit your first amount. You get ten dollars free, for whatever you want to do with it. Also, you get twenty-five percent off from your fees for the first. One thousand dollars you do on Binance. So check my referral link down below, guys. That's it for the video. I already showed you guys the two ways that I get 10x gains from coins before they get listed. So you guys should tell me what you think about the two ways. If there are other ways you guys have of getting into coins and getting a 10x pump when they get listed, tell me, guys. I want to hear it. Drop comments down below. Either way. The like button if you like the video. If you don't like it, still hit the dislike button. It's all for the YouTube algorithm. And hit that subscribe button, that bell notification button. Stay tuned on what more we're going to be doing. And that's it for the video. So what's up guys, it's your boy Mikara and a new video out today we're going to talk about is how to use stop limit on Binance. So getting into how to use stop limit, first of all what you have to do is log into your Binance account as you can see, I'm logged into my Binance account and first thing you do is click the markets, markets tab, as you can see I'm opening my markets tab and today we're going to be using BNB USDT 
for this transaction so i already opened it right here and as you can see it's already set on the stop limit tab so most times if you open it, it opens at, at the limit order then you have to select the stop limit so there are two price limits and a stop limit order one first of all there is the one called the stop price so the stop price is the price where you set which is easy you set for your order to be taken in so let's say i want to buy bnb right now and i want to put my stop price at 357 which is the price in which my limit order will get activated on so i say maybe 357.98 and i put my buy order at 357 point let's say 20 or let's just say i put my buy order at 357 and i put my sell order at 355 points let's say about 0.50 for my limit order and then i say i want to buy 4.93 bmb so once my price hits once the price is 357 my limit order of 355 will get activated so let me just take it a little bit down so it does it does have a two dollar difference because that's how i like to set it so you set this price limit here and basically what you do next is after making sure your stop price you've set a stop price that's closer to your limit order so it, it, your limit order can get filled it shouldn't be that close maybe uh make sure it's about a dollar to two dollars differential from where your stop price is your stop price is where it gets activated for your limit order to get into the market so i say this and i say buy it asks me if everything is correct and i say confirm now it's the same thing as sell in selling bnb so let's say if my other buys are 555.50 and i decide okay since my sell order entered at 555.50 that i would like to sell this thing at a higher price and maybe the price is at 388 right now okay i want to make sure that i am I'm at least ten dollars up in my order and ten dollars in profit in my order on each bnb that i bought so i keep it at 365 okay i keep my price my stop price which is the price where my limit order gets activated at 367.50 and then i put in my sell price at 364 point 50 i add the amount of bnb i want to put in i put three four point ninety three or four point ninety two and then because my order hasn't entered it won't go so i put sell bnb at that price and basically once this price starts dropping from 368 or 388 and drops up to 367.50 my limit order of 364 activates or 365 as i said before 365 activates and once it hits 365.50 it will sell this amount of bnb into the market so basically that is how to get your stop limit order set and be able to buy at the price you want and sell at the price you want without being concerned about maybe the market dropping so fast so maybe it could also be put in any coin at all. Maybe you bought BTC at 35k and it hits it was at 65k and it started dropping and set us sell order at 55k. Once it hits 55k, it will activate your stop price. And maybe when it's at 54k, you put a limit order, it will sell at 54k. So that's basically how this works. There's no no much brain into it. So that's it for the video, guys. I hope you guys like a lot please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification button. as you can see my stop limit order everything got in set in and bought in so i'm gonna hit that subscribe button and notification button and also don't forget to give this video a like if you loved it and
What's up, my fellow investors? It's me, the Wall Street Investor, aka Chis from Angel. And today we're gonna to be starting my first ever stock trading series. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to buy stocks on Binance. So recently, people use Binance as a crypto trading platform, which it is a crypto trading platform, but it has been expanded into helping people or allowing people buy stocks on it or tokenized stocks as it's called on Binance and then we're going to check out how to do that but before we get into it, what are stocks stocks are all shares of a corporation which is divided which has been divided so basically if you buy a share a share of a stock that means you have bought a slight percentage or a dividend percentage of that particular company or a fractional percentage of that particular company because stocks are divided so much that a lot amount of people could buy it without the stock ever finishing it's just like having bitcoin an amount of bitcoin that the company that owns bitcoin could just increase but getting into it let's get into my laptop and let's see how to buy stocks on Binance. So guys, we're into my laptop. And today, as you can see, I'm already on the stock token page on Binance. You could also do this with your phone or your smartphone or your iPhone, whatever. Just by opening the Binance app in your dashboard, you will see a little box that has Launchpad, Buy Crypto with your card and all this. Click the more button right there. Scroll down. You will see the stock trading button there. Click it. Get in here. Or if you're using your laptop as I am, you could just go down to the trade and go to stock tokens and get into this page. So basically, stock the stock market opens by around 1 p.m. Nigerian time and closes around. 23 o'clock which is 11 p.m. and you in time so you could just simply or go here in you know, as far as you have your BUSD because you have to have the Binance USD coin in order to buy any stocks here so right now Binance has only about five coins which is the Tesla score stocks the micro strategy stocks Microsoft Coinbase and Apple stocks so right now we could say okay let's buy some apple stocks we click the trade button let's give it a little bit of time i don't know why it's taking a little bit of time to show a cup it's about to pop up so it's popping up then i scroll up it's asking me i say okay i understand and as you can see i have about 251.304 bus in my wallet that i could use to buy the stock and as you can see, when buying stocks is different from buying other crypto where you can just set a limit order or whatever. But here you can't set a limit order, you just have to buy at the price of that. As you guys can see, I own about 0.10 of Apple stocks on my Binance. So what you do is if you are assuming I like me now, I have enough to buy a full Apple stock, I just click one Apple stock. I could click buy or sell. As you mean, I, have, I don't have the stock. I click the buy button to buy it. If I had the stock already, I already bought it and I want to sell, I could just click the sell button and sell the Apple stock and get over with it. As you can see, you can see a one minute chart, a one hour chart on it, a one week chart of it. But basically, that's a simple way to buy stocks. You should get in here, click the amount of stocks you want to buy. If it's a hundred, a million, whatever. If it's a hundred stock, ten stocks you want to buy, hundred. Just and just click buy, and immediately you buy the stocks. So that's how you buy stocks on Binance. Hope you guys love this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Give it a thumbs up if you don't think so. But I believe everyone loved how I explained the video. So give it a thumbs up. And hit that subscribe button and have a notification button and I'm out.